Today on Rock the Park. Wow. Cool. We're getting lost in time. Look at that, 1883. And space. Oh, wow. I think we're off the trail. We're in Utah's wild backcountry, where the views are out of this world. I can't remember the last time I saw the Milky Way so up close and personal. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. And I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. We're in Capitol Reef National Park in South Central Utah. This is the heart of Red Rock Country. It's full of cliffs, canyons, domes, and bridges, all situated within a 100-mile wrinkle in the earth. This park got its name from the rounded dome formations that resembled those on the US Capitol building, as well as the colorful ridges, or reef, of sandstone cliffs that lined the water pocket fold, a 100-mile buckle in the Earth's surface that makes up the heart of this park. This long but narrow park is located three and a half hours south of Salt Lake City. We're gonna be checking out a little bit of everything while we're here, including this area's unique cultural history. But first, I'm a little hungry. You wanna grab some food? Yeah, why not? One of the most unusual features here in Capitol Reef are the nine orchards, with over 3,000 various fruit and nut trees that are all open to the public. All right, what do we got? It's like a nice little apple tree. Oh yeah. Mormon settlers planted these orchards in the 1880s along the banks of the Fremont River. The small community eventually became known as Fruta. Wow, that is good. That's perfect. Holy cow. Today, the orchards are maintained by the National Park Service. Some of the trees produce fruit you've probably never tasted before, like Flemish beauty pears or yellow egg plums. That's what's so awesome about coming here is depending on what type of year, a different fruit's gonna be ripe. So you come in June, you're eating apricots. You come in September, you're eating pears. Also, you're not the only one who can enjoy it. Wow, look at them there. You've got one buck and then a bunch of others following. Mule deer are highly adaptable animals that can survive in the open desert to the high mountains, but they really seem to love the orchards. Just down the road from the orchard is one of the only buildings that remains from the pioneer days, the schoolhouse built in 1896. Oh man. Wow. That's a tiny little room. Yeah, talk about the one room schoolhouse. Oh yeah. This just wasn't a school room. This was a town hall, a meeting room, a, a dance hall. It yeah. must have been a tight community. I think it was. I don't think they had more than 10 families here at once. The last of the original Mormon families moved away when the Park Service bought out their land in 1969. We are headed to our first hike of this trip. We're going to Cassidy Arch. Capitol Reef has got some awesome history as we've already seen, and this hike has got some more, but this time we're talking outlaws. Hey, we're in the Wild West. The Cassidy Arch Trail is a three mile round trip hike that climbs a thousand feet to an overlook above Cassidy Arch. It was named for the outlaw Robert Leroy Parker, better known as Butch Cassidy, a notorious train and bank robber who used to hide out here. These rock formations were sculpted by wind and water over the last 20 million years. Oxidized iron turns the sandstone red, and the greenish gray tint is a result of water dissolving some of the iron. After hiking up the cliffside, we turn the corner, and there it is, Cassidy Arch. You can see why someone would want to hide out here. There's so many different slots and places where no one would see you, and this arch is a perfect example of that because the whole time we've been working our way up here, you haven't been able to see it. Go check this thing out? Yeah, let's get closer. Whoa. Oh, oh man. Crazy. That is massive. You cannot tell from far away. Cassidy Arch spans 70 to 100 feet across in most places and rises 120 feet above the canyon floor. It's hard to believe that little drops of water were able to create such a huge hole in this solid rock. 
You see this so often because sandstone is so fine. The water sinks into the sandstone and then it freezes, which makes it expand. And that kind of cracks away the rock and over time, it hollows it out kind of like that. It's wild to see the power of time and mother nature so hard at work in this park and how the Native Americans, the early pioneers, and even outlaws adapted to it. Now, we're gonna see if we can do it. We're going ultra light. You can basically see every direction. And ultra dark in the backcountry. It's incredible. We're in Capitol Reef National Park in Utah, prepping for a two-day trek through the backcountry. And we're going ultralight. Ultralight is basically getting your pack as light as you possibly can without compromising safety. Generally, it means your bag is going to be around 20 pounds. We usually carry more than 30 pounds, but knowing what to pack begins with knowing what your destination may throw at you. Things like knowing what the weather is going to be like and how much water will be available. First off, the majority of your bag will be filled with things to keep you warm and protected. A sleeping bag, sunscreen, and lots of layers. And then this is what we call a bivy sack. Basically a big bag that you sleep in that keeps you out of the elements. And of course, making sure that you have a first aid kit with you. In case somebody trips and you need a quick patch up, you always wanna have one of these babies in your pack at all times. Next, let's talk about food. Yes, you don't know if you're gonna be out there a few extra days, so we prepared for that. A whole assortment of energy bars, protein bars, little fruit snacks, you know, give you that quick little energy boost. Another key thing, and I would say this is probably the most important, water. Ooh. That you can say is the <laughs> yeah. most important. When you go out for more than a day in the backcountry, you can't possibly carry all the water you'll need. So you have to bring something to treat the water. We've got a water filter pump. This is huge. And then when it comes to navigating ourselves, first off, we've got a GPS. So we can plug in our coordinates, make sure we're staying on track, and know where we are at all times. But if you want to kind of go old school, which is something we enjoy doing, you bring a compass. And last, but certainly not least, when it comes to navigating, we've got ourselves a map. If you've got any room left in your pack after that, it's always good to take a little rope, some duct tape, and a multi-tool, just in case you have to improvise something out there. So it looks like we're all set. Let's repack up and uh, let's get out of here. Yeah! We set off hiking down the Capitol Gorge Road. So normally you'd be able to drive down and get off trail about a couple miles down here. But right now, this road is undergoing some maintenance. It looks very dry, but only a few weeks ago, flash flooding just ripped this thing up. It's something to remember when we're out here hiking, checking the weather forecast to make sure no big storms are coming in. And if they are, the last place you wanna find yourself is in a canyon. As little as a quarter inch of rain can produce a flash flood and torrents of water can come roaring through these narrow canyons with very little warning. After all, it's what carved out this gorge. It's right over here somewhere. Okay, so Colton spotted a snake. He kind of dove under a little rock here. There he is. Oh yeah, oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh. He is a garter snake. Oh wow. And just like that, there he goes. Garter snakes are common throughout the western U.S. and not dangerous. The only venomous snake that lives here is the midget faded rattlesnake. Don't let the name fool you. These guys grow up to two feet long and are experts at blending in with the sandstone. So we're gonna watch our step. Oh, check it out, dude. Oh, are these the petroglyphs? Yep. There's a ton. Right up there, do you see what look like antlers? Yeah. In there, see the sun? Petroglyphs are all over the park, and no one's really sure how many there are or just why the native peoples carved them. It's so amazing to be able to look at these and see familiar things. You have an idea of what they mean, but no one really knows for sure. We're making some good progress hiking through the gorge, and then we start to see even more evidence of those who have come here before us. Ooh, look at this. Wow. Yeah. Look at that, 1883, and that one's 1925. This is the Pioneer Register. Travelers began scratching their names into the rock back in the 1870s. Now, writing your name on these walls is not something you'd want to do today, but it's kind of cool to see theirs up there. 
We've covered almost four miles and made our way out of the gorge. Now we want to get to the top of these cliffs. We have to start using our navigational skills to figure out where we're actually going. We've got our route picked out, but right now we're following a game trail. And it kind of shows you that sometimes you just got to follow where the animals go. Desert bighorn have been roaming these ranges for a long time and are even depicted in the rock art. They tend to live in herds of 5 to 15, and their daily habits largely depend on food and water. Today, that's a lot like us. Our goal is to get up as high as we can, not only to get some epic views, but also to find water. There are supposed to be some water sources up here. On the top of these cliffs, there are natural catch basins called potholes or tanks that collect rainwater and snowmelt. According to our map, we should only be a couple of miles away from some, but getting there might not be so easy. I think we're off the trail. So we haven't been on this trail for more than five minutes, and all of a sudden I realized that I've jetted off of it. Look at this. Be very, very easy to get lost out here. Well, there you go. All right. So I just typed in our coordinates to when we want to get to our high point. Got ourselves a nice little climb. It's gonna be over a thousand feet. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh man. The air here is dry and the sun has been beating down on us. Right now, I'm extremely thirsty and I'm going through this stuff pretty fast. Having to dip into your emergency reserves is never a good feeling. Whew. This trail is basically non-existent. Yeah. This is north. That's south, east, west. We're right here. No, I, I, we're right here. We hope the game trail would lead us up to the ridge, but it's a no-go. We're having to rely solely on our map and GPS to get there. Ultimately, where we're going, we know that there's gonna be water. Our dilemma right now is making sure that we stay on course and actually get there. We're lost and running low on water on our ultralight trek through the backcountry of Capitol Reef National Park. So as we're looking around, Colton pulls out the map and takes a look. What we realize is that we're supposed to be following Capitol Gorge for a little while. So we spot that and we get back on track. Wow. Thankfully, we have our bearings now. Wow. We're not out of the woods yet. We still need to find water. So now that we've come up over this ridge, you can see where we're headed. Right up there, you can start to see some of these slick rock formations. Slick rock is sandstone that has been buffed smooth by water and wind. And it's good news we're only about a mile away because we need the water that's possibly collected there. Wow. That is a crazy change of landscape. Yeah, it is. Look at this. Pure rock. Yeah. Hey, man, look at this. Ooh. Right on the way to camp. Water. Oh, it's that nice is nice. and cold, too. Woo Believe it or not, the water in these potholes is from the mere seven inches of rainfall Capitol Reef gets each year. All right, let's get this thing going. And while the rain itself might be safe to drink, you still need to filter the water to get rid of any of the bacteria or other organisms that might collect here. Here, a test, huh? Mm-hmm. Does it taste good? Oh, yeah. We've got our water. Now it's time to figure out where we're going to sleep. All we've got to do is just keep going up until we come to a saddle, and I think that's going to be the perfect spot to camp out tonight. A saddle is a pass or ridge nestled between two peaks or higher landforms. From all the way up here, we should get a gorgeous sunset, and then we're sleeping basically under the stars. It's going to be awesome. Oh, wow. All right. So we come up to the saddle, and the whole view just opens up. It's basically a 360 degree view. This is it. This is camp. No doubt about it. Holy cow. It's incredible. Ooh, I gotta Ooh, hold on to my yeah. hat. Woo! Since we're going ultra light, we don't have a tent to set up, which means there's extra time to kick back, enjoy the views, and crack out the one luxury I brought with me, my flute. What'd you think? Oh, 
was great. That's Capitol Reef. <laughs> Tonight, we're gonna get a view of the stars that is second to none, because Capitol Reef is in the upper echelon when it comes to a night sky. There's little to no light pollution out here, and the park is doing everything it can to keep it that way. And wow, is it worth it. There's no better way to fall asleep than to watch one of the best shows on Earth. I can't remember the last time I saw the Milky Way so up close and personal. We're waking up after spending a night under the stars in the back country of Capitol Reef National Park. As I wake up in the morning, the first thing I see is this majestic sunrise. The sun is coming up over the Colorado Plateau and the Henry Mountains are just glowing. It's a great way to start the day. Yeah. All right, let's pack up. You know the drill some breakfast and hit the trail. Today, we've got a five mile hike ahead of us to get back down to our car. We're gonna be working our way down the ridge towards Pleasant Creek, and then following that all the way up to this slot canyon we've been told about. From up here on the ridge, you can really see the geological diversity of this park. It's crazy to think that more than 200 million years ago, this was a seafloor. So this area right here used to be underwater. You don't really, Think of the desert in Utah as a once thriving ocean, but it was. And that's not the only ancient thing up here. One thing that you can find on top of these huge sandstone cliffs is this black soil crust that's incredibly old. And on top of it, you've got all this cyanobacteria, which is one of the oldest organisms on the planet. This crust prevents erosion and helps desert plants thrive, but it's very fragile. Even one footprint could destroy a hundred years of growth. So we're keeping to another game trail. We've already covered some good ground and then we come to a massive overlook. Oh, nice. And we look down into the valley and what do you know, there's Pleasant Creek, our trail home. Should we start making our way down? Let's do it. Ooh, all right. Pleasant Creek. Pleasant Creek and our trail. Let's follow this bad boy out. Yep. After a short hike along the creek, we come to a fork. Oh, Jack, you see that? Oh yeah, that's gotta be the canyon. It's gonna be a little bit of a detour, but we gotta check it out. We get to the mouth of the slot canyon, and we don't know how tight it's gonna get in here, so we better drop our bags. One less thing to worry about. This is cool. Oh, wow. See how narrow it is? Yeah. Oh, man. We walk into the slot canyon, and the walls just shoot up. Ooh. Oh man, here we go. Wow, this is cool. A slot canyon is significantly deeper than it is wide. Here, the walls are 100 feet tall and as little as three feet apart from one another. Wow, it's amazing how these canyons form. A slot canyon begins as a hairline crack that slowly grows deeper and deeper as water eats away at it over time. It's getting tighter. Well, we start on top of these giant rocks and now we're right at the bottom. Exactly. This park has been surprising from the start, but it's time to turn around and get ready to find our next adventure. Capitol Reef is a park where you're gonna get some of the most inspiring scenic views you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. It's astounding how much human history is in this park. I mean, you've got the Native Americans that go back over a thousand years. Then you've got the pioneers, you've got outlaws. Like, this is really the Wild West. Going into the backcountry kind of felt like you were part of that like pioneer mentality of just trying to navigate around this incredibly crazy and scenic landscape. And you know, we stumble a little bit there at the beginning. A few hiccups, yes, but we were able to use our map and our navigational skills to get back on course. I think that's what finding your own adventure and a place like Capitol Reef is all about. Yeah, I gotta say. We're definitely not finished in Utah, and certainly not Capitol Reef. This is the perfect park for the explorer inside all of us. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Coming down. Yeah!
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.